evening is always one of the most important uh, evenings of the year for Ferndale Middle School, welcoming our new fifth grade families and students, and giving you an overview of what to expect. And as Mr. Jeffrey said, even as we go through the presentation, if at the conclusion questions are, are not answered or you still have remaining or unresolved issues or concerns, our doors and our cell phones and our emails still work and we'll do our best to resolve uh, any questions, concerns or issues that potentially might remain. I'm going to start first by asking, uh, starting with Mr. Bob Francis for each uh, staff member who was in attendance this evening to just introduce yourself and your role. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Bob Francis, I'm the assistant principal here at Ferndale Middle School. Hey, everybody. This is Mike Sigler. I am a sixth grade math teacher and ILT for the math department, also the uh, middle school cross country coach. Welcome. I am. Hi, I'm Michelle Morton. I'm the middle school counselor. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Morton. I am 6th grade science and AVID. Can they see me too? Huh? Can they see me too? Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Burke. I teach 6th uh, grade band and orchestra along with Mr. Jameson. Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Gregory Webb and I am the mental health specialist with Ferndale Middle School. Good evening. Hey. I'm Elaine Zold and I teach sixth grade social studies and um, AVID, I teach the AVID elective. Good evening everybody, my name is Aaron Blatt. I'm sixth grade English language arts teacher, uh, instructional lead teacher for the English department. I also uh, run a book club and uh, a Dungeons and Dragons Club. That's it. I'm Lori Tuzian. Um, I'm the art teacher. Some of your um, children may have me because I am also at Upper Elementary. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Siglaric, and I'm um, the special education um, teacher consultant. Hello, I'm Kim Schroeder. I teach fifth grade band and orchestra, instrumental music. So some of your students already have me as a teacher, but um, at the middle school, I teach choir for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Is that it? Any other staff who are in attendance? I guess I'll chime in. All right, uh, and once again, they are our Ferndale Middle School team. They are a committed, talented, and I mean, an exceptional group of educational professionals. Uh, their commitment, you know, and, and excellence that I see daily is something that makes coming to work exciting. And I am so excited about, you know, what your students are going to get from their experience with working with this talented group of educators. So as we move forward with the presentation, uh, you'll hear a lot from us as a team. Uh, I did want you to get the formal uh, faces of some of these great teachers because they have such amazing emojis, uh, but their face, face, real human faces, you know, look even better. So we're glad you're able to see both the emojis that you'll see in those human faces. So next slide, and thank you, Mrs. Jeff. Our agenda for tonight is to, you know, provide a plan for, for the plan, to guide you through what our building expectations are and our plans for success, uh, to run and, and, and have a overview of what your child needs to do to be successful in math and ELA. We'll outline what our course offerings and clubs. We'll have an AVID overview and what it takes to be an honor student at, an, an honor student at Ferndale Middle School. Uh, we'll go through our really quick overview this evening of our social media and cell phone policy, which we'll share the, uh, if not the entire presentation, the majority of the presentation will be shared with you. 
but we definitely need you to examine the cell phone policy piece. Uh, Mrs. Garrett will conclude uh, with our elective survey information and questions. Next slide, please. FMS resource options. We are currently preparing for a traditional fall 2021 uh, plan. Uh, the district will be laying out and we know we're still, you know, in, in that mode of being really, really hopeful. Uh, but the expectation is that we will be on site in a traditional setting. All right. With that, and even in our current hybrid format, Ferndale Public School has created new sanitizing and entry protocols. And depending on where we go with uh, the current health situation, we will maintain them, you know, throughout next year and until we, you know, have some stability with what is currently occurring. As was mentioned during the beginning of this presentation, we've also hired a new mental health, uh, mental health professional, Mrs. Gregory Webb, and our plan is to continue to support the whole child. So we're looking at it from a mental health, building sanitizing, and instructional uh, components. Next slide, please. Uh, we go into 2021-2022, still focused on our big rocks or our major building initiatives, which are AVID implementation as we continue to build uh, building-wide strategies and, and, and instructional planning uh, across all grade levels, six, seven, and eight. We're also looking to continue to expand AVID opportunities for all students in sixth, seventh, and eighth. So that will so be one of our main- Shoes on. Start get the rest of the stuff out. Lord, please unmute yourself. And please mute yourself. All right. Can you go back real quickly? Thank you. Back to that last slide. Sorry, right. I'm gonna, Miss Gare, actually, I'll just stay. It's not letting you control the screen and me letting people from the weight room. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just do it. I'm Thank gonna... you, Miss Jeffrey. Uh, Sorry. Impact our program. So you're gonna be here for a long time. So we thank you, Miss Jeffrey, for your commitment. <laughs> so our Impact Our Program Evaluation, our team of SEL committee members have worked really hard. As I said, we're looking at how we can support the whole child and the Impact Hour program is an important piece of that. And our data teams, looking at how we can support our students, both high achieving, students who are bubble kids, and students who need additional support. Looking at the data and looking at how students are performing and allowing that data to help drive our instruction. Next slide, please. Our expectations, and we went through this same slide, uh, and. We'll definitely ask, answer that question about what is AVID at the end. So hold that, that's a great question. These are the same expectations we provided for your scholar when we did our uh, student presentation a couple of weeks ago or last week. We, we expect and we know that our students are able to maintain high levels of excellence. They are, we expect timeliness, getting to your class, getting to school on time, being where you're supposed to be, preparedness, going to your classes, arriving with what you need, you know, having those executive functioning skills that we firmly believe will lead to student success. We also have expectations for respect for teachers, staff, and classmates. And we will also exhibit and maintain respect for our scholars. We're all human beings and we all wanna be treated fairly equitably and with respect. And we are a commitment to improvement in math and ELA. Those are our major targets that we know, even as I outline some of the parental uh, supports that we can get that growth that we know our scholars are able to put our parents support. Next slide, please. Uh, reading is a very, 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 and I cannot say very enough important strategy for student success. Literacy is a key. I know being in, on social media, I know with you know, kids being you know, involved with virtual learning, sometimes we can forget that students become better by practice. They become better with their instruments, they become better in getting on Instagram, they become better uh, 
with so many strategies and, and, and things that they do with throughout their life that sometimes we forget that you become a better reader by reading that we need our students and we need your support. And this is one of the most serious areas of support we need from parents is to ensure that your child is reading at least 30 minutes each and every night. And by reading, and, and I say it and I don't, and it, and it might sound jokingly, but I'm serious. We're talking about reading something other than a text message. Next slide, please. <laughs> Reading something other than a text message. That's hilarious. The math transition. Before you can help your child, it's important to understand what is happening mathematically to the adolescent brain. The new, the new mathematical concepts that your student will learn are, you know, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of study. It takes, if you're not getting it, to advocate and actively engage and ask asking questions and you know uh, uh, trying to get clarity when you have issues middle school math is really almost a gatekeeper for student success i think the whole middle school experience is a gatekeeper for long-term student success and as i mentioned ela and math are key areas that we want to focus parents and students on as we look at what we want our students to achieve. So we want you to, you know, if your child is not getting it or having struggling in certain areas, make sure that you're reaching out and communicating to that teacher. But even during the course of this summer, work with your child on basic math computation facts, building that multiplication skills, working with fractions, you know, letting them play with rulers and measure things, engage their brains and applying mathematical strategies to real life experiences. Uh, a lot of the things that we did in the past are no longer applicable for students. They don't look at a clock like we looked at a clock when we were growing up and were able to learn multiplication facts, geometry, looking at, you know, uh, so many different things we were able to learn from an analog clock. Kids don't have that exposure. So we have to build that into their daily practice and we need your support. So I want you to think two things through and, and once again, your support with reading and with working with your child on math computation facts and skills. Next slide, please. Uh, once again, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but social media issues are big. Please manage and, and support your child's social media account. Look at how much time they're spending on it. Most of the conflicts we have, unfortunately, derive from social media issues. Uh, we know that that is the reality of our time, but we need your support in that area. Next slide. You know, so 91% of 16 to 24 year olds use the internet for social net networking. Unfortunately, we know that there are uh, issues related to excessive social media interactions. So please make sure you're monitoring that as we move forward. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm not gonna go through these, we're gonna go quickly. Please review the expectations, cell phone use during a traditional calendar or a traditional setting or on-site setting. Next slide, please. And next slide. So make sure you read through this thoroughly uh, if students will uh, receive a warning when they are using their cer uh, cell phone inappropriately, uh, they'll get a second one, which will be a 30 day, a third one, next slide please, which will be a 60 day. And a final one will be that you, that student will not be able to bring uh, their cell phone on site. We do allow cell phone usages uh, for students three times a day, before the school day, during lunch and after school. Next slide, please. Next slide. So make sure you thoroughly read through uh, both the cell phone policies. Make sure you're working with your scholar around reading and math uh, and interacting and making sure you're helping to support us with their interaction with social media. I'm going to turn the next few slides over to our new school counselor, Mrs. Christine Garrett.
Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to sixth grade. We're going to go over some things with you today. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Student organization is huge. Um, middle school moving classes. Uh, we want the students to be organized. Uh, folders and notebooks will be color coded. Um, please look at our website. It tells you um, what colors you need to, to have for each class. Uh, students will need a three ring binder. Trapper keeper. Uh, we expect students to arrive to class on time with all the mat needed materials daily. Uh, locker upkeep, we want them to keep it organized. Um, we hope that they'll expect to stop at their locker at most three times a day in the morning, at lunch, and then at the end of the day. Students um, need a daily routine to review work and study at home also. And if your student is struggling with organization, um, I can help with that. You can reach out to me and I will work with them on making sure that they're organized. Next slide, please. Uh, routines are very important. Each student will have seven teachers in a school day. They'll have an impact hour. Um, they'll have four minutes of passing between each period. Uh, students will experience more independence um, and, and larger academic expectations. Um, they will have their own, own lunch time to spend with their grade level peers. Next slide. Six, this is where it gets a little confusing, but I'm here to support you. I've already actually been getting emails, which is great. Um, sixth graders will get to choose two year long electives or one year long elective and two semester electives. Um, our year long um, electives are listed at the top at Spanish, orchestra, band, choir, AVID, and then our semester electives are technology, uh, PE, and art. We will also have um, possibly have an additional semester elective called social justice. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Next slide, please. Students will have four main content, content areas, uh, Cambridge English or advanced ELA, math or honors math, social studies and science. Um, I think Mr. Mays is going to talk about our advanced and honors courses. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about the the process that we go through to to determine which students are placed into to honors classes and, and really want to highlight a change that, that we want all of you to be aware of. So each year, um, we typically take the NWEA assessment three times a year. This year, uh, we'll only take it twice. Um, and also in a typical year, we'd have MSTEP data to look at. Um, students didn't take MSTEP last spring, so we don't have that data. We're still looking at, at as much uh, assessment data as we can gather on your students to determine, you know, historically, um, students who, who we think are ready for, for honors classes. In addition, we are leaning heavily, and we always do lean heavily on the, the fifth grade teaching team to get their recommendations. Uh, Ms. Jeffrey also is asked to, to contribute um, recommendations for honors classes. So after looking at all the data, we, we identify students uh, who, who we think, based on our, our analysis of the data, are ready for honors classes, and then we make that recommendation. The, the big change that Ferndale Public Schools is moving to is what's called self-selection. So regardless of, of whether your student uh, has, has a high test score or um, a teacher recommendation, if you and your student feel that they are ready for the challenge and the rigor of an honors math or an honors ELA class, you may self-select for an honors class uh, when you complete your course selection form. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about that process, 
you can connect to me either um, directly at, at tom.mace at ferndaleschools.org or you can reach out to Ms. Jeffrey or Mr. Petty and I'll be happy to, to discuss further with any of you. Um, Mr. Sigler, did you wanna talk about honors math six at all here? Sure. Um, hello everybody. Uh, once again, I'm uh, Mike Sigler. I'm the sixth grade math teacher and also uh, with that, the uh, honors math teacher. And um, I've been excited to see an increase in honors classes over the, over the past few years. This year we had two honors sixth grade, grade math classes. Math classes. And I'm hoping, and I'm that's, hoping going that's going to change. But just as Mr. Mays uh, pointed out, um, uh, I will be uh, teaching honors and it's uh, self-selection. So I will be working closely with uh, any decision you make. Um, if honors, if you think honors is right for your child and if, if we think it's a good fit as well. Um, so uh, uh, that's, that's really all really I have to say about it. But you can also contact me as well uh, at michael.sigler at ferndaleschools.org. Um, and I'd be, I look forward to working with, with each of you. But the honors program, uh, what's, what we do in a sense is um, we, we cover the sixth grade curriculum and then we cover half of the seventh grade. That's, what, that's really what honors does uh, in sixth grade. And then when they get to seventh, they'll get the second half of the seventh grade curriculum and all of eighth grade. So by the time they're in eighth grade, they'll be uh, able to take algebra. So that's really, that's the path they're on. So um, thank you for your time and uh, talk to everybody soon. Thank you, Mr. Sigler. Mr. Blatt, uh, did you want to say anything about advanced ELA 6? I always want to say something, Mr. Mace. Okay, <laughs> floor is yours. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, hi guys, uh, Aaron Blatt, sixth grade ELA. And uh, you know, honors ELA in the sixth grade does not function exactly in the same way as it does in math, where there's a sort of a, a, an advancement of, you know, where the kids are moving beyond grade level uh, material necessarily. Um, we do, we, there will be projects. Um, there will be, I think, um, a lot more opportunities. Maybe th there'll be more, you know, relative to their peers for um, self-selected learning. Um, literature circles, uh, there's things that I am able to do in the honors class that I'm not a, maybe necessarily able to do um, in the regular uh, classes. But uh, my thing is, is that I try to create an honors curriculum for all, all my kids. Um, and, you know, um, although, you know, there's no doubt that many of your kids who either self-select or be selected by teachers or through their test scores, there's no doubt that they're ready for like a level of rigor that's maybe above some of their peers. Um, I, you know, I think that overall, like all of the sixth grade, whether it's honors or not, is, is pretty darn rigorous. So uh, if you ever have any questions, feel free to email me at aaron.blad at ferndaleschools.org. Um, I'd be happy to talk you through it. Um, I've already fielded and answered a few emails about honors English. Um, and I'm happy to do it. No, one other thing is we do a lot of thinking routines, which is a thing that your kids probably are aware of from fifth grade and fourth grade. Um, but I do them in a more, I'd say, like sophisticated, advanced way with my honors kids. But the one thing, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll be quiet after this, is, um, you know, being, if, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm an honors kid, then, you know, I got to be willing and ready and able to do the work. It doesn't work when the kid is pushed, I mean, you, you're welcome as a parent, it's your choice to push your kid somewhere they don't wanna go, but it helps when they wanna be there um, or at least having a, in, and I'm willing to talk to your kid as well, um, you know, talking to them about the importance, you know, but, and know this, and then I'll, now I'll be quiet. If they don't self-select honors or they're not in honors in sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade, there's still an opportunity for being in honors in ninth grade. The, 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 it doesn't evaporate because they're not in middle school honors. They can, and that Mr. Mays might be able to speak to that, but you know, just because you're in sixth grade honors doesn't mean you won't be in ninth grade honors. So thank you and everyone have a great day. Can't wait to meet your kids next year. Thank you, Mr. Blood. that's a great point. Yes, I, I definitely should have mentioned. Um, in fact, we, we reevaluate honors placements every year. Um, 
typically once a student is in an honors class, um, we don't reevaluate that. Uh, we assume that, that once you're in an honors class, you, you belong in the honors class and you're gonna stay there. Um, but uh, next year at this time, I will be working with, with Ms. Guerra, Mr. Petty, um, the sixth grade team, and we'll be looking at, at students that we missed this year and, and asking who's ready to make the jump into honors seventh grade. And then we'll do the same thing going into eighth grade and then again into high school. So Mr. Blatt's point is very important. Uh, we, we are constantly looking um, to, to move students up into an honors class. Um, so definitely keep that in mind moving forward if you do not elect to, to jump into an honors sixth grade class. And with that, um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, otherwise I'm going to mute and wait for my next slide. Can you click the next slide, please? So we're gonna, these are some, um, some focuses for success in sixth grade. Um, the ones that I really like to highlight is about habits, um, checking, checking email every day, using your planner. I always tell students, um, I have used a planner, it feels like all of my life, I still use it to this day or I would miss meetings. Um, it's a great habit. Um, write down the topic and assignments for that day, check your MyStar, and you will constantly hear us preach um, about checking MyStar. We'll, we'll actually look at MyStar briefly um, in later slides. Next slide, please. And if any teacher wants to jump in, you're welcome. Um, sixth grade ELA success, checking Google Classroom, connect to remind, staying aware of the daily classwork, reading 20 minutes a day, um, and connecting to the book club. Mr. Blatt has a, a book club. I think he already spoke a little bit about it. Next slide. Science. Um, Ms. Morden and Mrs. Evans, are you on? Do you want to talk a little bit about this, or would you like me to? A few brief words. I would just say um, definitely middle school science allows the kids to do a lot more hands-on activities. They'll be coming to science, of course, every day. Um, these are some of our big major units that we cover in the year, and we are huge on um, note-taking and um, reading or writing across the curriculum, investigating. So we use the 5E model, and I can't wait to meet your kids. Next slide, please. PE. Um, these are some of the things to expect. Uh, working out during class, completing a daily log, doing a high intensity interval training, uh, no weights are needed, and students are graded daily and put into MyStar. Again, you know, check MyStar for your grades. Sixth grade art with Miss T. Miss T, are you here? Do you want to talk about your slide? I am. Um, all right. So the big thing that I want you to take away from what sixth grade art is is that it is a semester long class. However, you can take both semester one and two because it is two different curriculums. Um, also. I get this a lot from students and that they're not confident in their ability because they start to compare themselves with their peers. And a big focus in my class is not on end product, but on student growth. So your child will always be graded on their individual abilities, never based on what somebody else is doing in the class. Thank you. Next slide. The uh, Spanish. Um, Spanish is a full year and it's with Mr. Adams and Mr. Turner. Um, these are just a few highlights. There's always vocab materials to practice for class. 
Communication is key, especially in a new language. Reach out with Remind. Um, and we'll talk about Spanish a little bit more later when we talk about full year electives. Next slide, please. Hi, I'll chime in and uh, go over the music classes. Uh, I'm Tim Burke. I teach band and orchestra. Uh, and also Mrs. Schroeder is here. She teaches choir. Uh, and I believe Mr. Jameson is here also. He teaches band and orchestra with me. Um, we have one of the strongest music programs in the state. And uh, your students will have a chance to learn to play an instrument or join choir in sixth grade. Um, and they're going to have lots of great experiences doing that. You can choose to be in band, orchestra, and you can do choir, but that means that's your electives for the entire year if you do two music classes. Um, at the beginning of the year, we'll help students pick an instrument that fits them. All they really have to do right now is decide, do they want to do orchestra, which the instruments for that are violin, viola, cello, and bass, or do they want to be in band, which is flute, oboe, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, French horn, trombone, euphonium, or percussion. Or they can also be in choir, um, and we can do the both, both of those. Um, students who are in choir obviously use their voice, so that's no issue right there. And again, you can do both band and choir or orchestra and choir, but that is your only elective. Uh, you can still be in sports, athletics, all kinds of other activities and be in band, orchestra, or choir. And um, we sent you a link to our website. It's on the bottom of this slide, and it was also emailed home to you by Ms. Jeffrey, I believe, on the reminder for today, that has some videos and things like that that can help you get to know the instruments made by students uh, of Ferndale Schools telling you the instruments they play, a little bit about the instruments and what they love about being in band or an orchestra as far as the instrumental stuff goes. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to myself, Mr. Jameson, Mrs. Schroeder, or even Mr. Moy. Mr. Burke, there is a question in the chat regarding how they picked their top three instruments last year, if you remember in Google form. Will you guys be just restarting that process again? We do have quite a few new fifth graders. We probably will do that uh, again in the fall. Um, the main thing is pick a class so we can get you scheduled and then we'll work with you to find an instrument. We'll allow you to try your top three and all of those things. Um, most students end up with their first choice but every now and then they struggle with that. So we make sure we have an instrument that they're gonna be successful on. And I'm a firm and big fan of the Unify Arts Program. So we look forward to maintaining, as Mr. May said, the, the state respect that the Ferndale Musical Unify Arts Program has. It is a strong tradition. So we really, really are excited about the incoming sixth graders. We're excited about the work that they've done even virtually. And I know Mrs. Guerra is working hard to make sure that every student who's in band, orchestra, or choir will come right over to the middle school and transition into the program. So we are excited about that. Ms. Garrett, did I miss any content area slides before we go into Avid? I feel like I might have double clicked. Did you get every? No, okay, that was everything. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next, I believe we're going to talk about AVID. Ms. Zold, would you like to go over your slides? And we have. Let's try that with sound. There we go. Um, hi there. I'm Elaine Zold. Um, I teach AVID. Um, Michelle Morden also teaches AVID. Um, next year, I will have the sixth and eighth graders, and Michelle will have the seventh graders. Um, what we do with the AVID, we, we build them into a cohort. So the group of kids stays together with the same teacher for the entire time that they're in middle school. So we rotate grades. Um, Mr. Sigler is on the AVID site team. Um, Mr. Mays is our site team leader. Mr. Petty, Mr. Francis, um, Mrs. Guerra. So we have, um, you know, it's like a, it's a whole team approach to this. AVID is an elective class at Ferndale Middle School. It's a one year long class, so that would take up one of your elective choices if your child chooses to enroll. Um, AVID is a, is a program. So it is um, something that was started in the 1980s 
And the purpose of the class, it, um, it's an academic enrichment program. The intent is to build those skills that kids really need to be good um, at school, at, um, at succeeding in rigorous academic classes. Um, it's available in Ferndale from grades six, eventually through 12. Um, this is our second year doing it in Ferndale. So um, our oldest AVID cohort is finishing ninth grade and moving into 10th grade. So as they age and progress, we're gonna move it up through the high school. Um, and the idea is to prepare kids, um, bright kids, motivated kids to do well in challenging high school classes. Um, it's available for, for all students. And um, it's a combination of a, a solid best practices curriculum combined with um, the dynamic environment and the hands-on like practical application of these skills every day. Um, we focus on things like organization, note-taking, study skills, uh, collaborative group efforts. We run these tutorial groups where the kids have to work together and help each other learn. Um, heavily emphasis on language arts, writing, and um, reading for information. So it's just, it's a bundle of um, skills and mindset. Um, it builds confidence and it really just helps those kids who kind of need that, that lift, that boost, who could be doing well in harder classes if they had those organization writing communication skills down. Um, next slide, please. Um, so if you're thinking like, oh, this might be good for my child to be an AVID, um, really the kids who we see as um, the ideal AVID students are kids who, we, who are capable, those kids who are bright and who want it, but they're not realizing their full academic potential. Um, kids who are motivated to do well and work hard, um, kids who have good attendance, um, often AVID students are students who are underrepresented at college um, colleges and universities, those populations where we don't see enough. Um, they might be the first in their family to attend college, statistically nationwide through the AVID program, that tends to be true. Um, and often these are kids who are academically like kind of in the middle of their peer group. Um, sixth grade students, if you're a sixth grader would benefit from a structured approach to organization, time management, and other learning habits, um, this might be a great elective choice for for them. Um, Mrs. Morden, do you want to add anything about AVID? You're muted, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we AVID teachers do. We like to start with a mute and then we <laughs> start talking. Um, so I guess the only thing I would add is, um, you know, and, and Mrs. Zold said it very well, the organization piece is really important in AVID. I have seen students really thrive and start keeping planners and making notes and doing note taking. So I really love the fact that starting AVID in sixth grade, it gives them that boost of doing middle school. Um, I think this is a transitional age and starting it in sixth grade and getting those key skills at that time are really critical. So, um, And it's a very social cool. class too. The idea is to build this tight community where the kids feel safe and supported and they cooperate and work together. So. Um, as your kids progress through this AVID program with this group of their peers, there tends to be like a, um, like a, a family mentality. And actually we have um, Apriya, are you still here Apriya? I'm we here. actually have an AVID student, she is here. So this is Apriya, Apriya is awesome. She was awesome before she took AVID and she is like a, an ideal AVID student. And so Apriya volunteered to come to us tonight to just kind of speak super briefly about um, how she decided to take the AVID class and what she's um, got out of it so far. So Priya, you're up, honey. Good job. AVID, AVID is a really fun class. It helps, it helps you like, um, it, like it helps you be like supported during school and it helps you um, stay organized and take notes and just like get those like strategies that you need that um, can help you in your classes and it's just like a really fun class but it's very productive and we do a lot of fun work in there. 
I love that she used the word fun because um, usually AVID is way more fun than it has been this year. So Apriya, you're the best. Apriya um, has been- I had Apriya last year, so I'm excited she's an AVID and I'm like, Apriya. Yeah. yeah so. She's, and so that's like typically what the kids say as, you know, as they progress through AVID is these, this ability to take notes, to study and to stay on top of your schoolwork. Um, we really do see um, an improvement in the grades when the kids are, learn those time management and organization skills. Um, that, that's, a, that's a really big thing at the middle school AVID level. And then in high school, as they age, you know, that it gets more sophisticated and complex, the stuff they work on. But. And the whole inquiry piece too. I think, you yeah, know, that is that. like, yeah, these Socratic circles and some of their group projects. Um, my kids are doing a career cluster project right now. And Elaine is running some amazing stuff with her Socratic circles. So if those are your kids, if they're inquisitive, they love group projects, um, they love dialogue, debate, and all of that, it is probably a, a good fit for them. It probably is. Um, Mr. Mays, did you want to add anything? Sure, I'll, I'll jump back in, thanks. Um, so just to piggyback on what Ms. Zold and Ms. Morden were just saying, um, oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> nice, nice kitty in the, the picture, sorry. Uh, I guess I should turn my camera back off. My apologies, everybody. Um, so as as the students progress through through high school, the um, the focus of the class content and curriculum tends to be more on college readiness. Um, you know, right now in middle school, the focus is on organization, note taking, giving those students the skills necessary to to jump into an honors and an AP class and be successful. Um, and then, of course, the the end goal is, is to close opportunity gaps and prepare all students for college and career readiness when they graduate. So 11th grade, there's a, a big focus on college applications, college uh, readiness. Um, senior year would be college applications, college essays. And, and I know for, for the fifth graders in the audience, you're thinking graduation is so far away. But uh, as the, the father of a, a recent college graduate, I will tell you it goes by so fast. <laughs> So never too early to start thinking about, uh, you know, the, the end of high school and graduation. Um, so back to probably what Ms. Zold wanted me to talk about was um, the AVID application. Um, we do require our students to complete an application. And many of you probably received an email or two from me earlier this year um, with information that, that your student was recommended by one of the fifth grade teachers. Um, we, we have extended the application window for AVID, um, obviously with, with going remote to, to um, you know, coming back to the buildings at the beginning of March. Uh, that was a very busy time, and, and I understand that the AVID application probably wasn't the most important thing for most of you. So if, if you're interested in what you've heard about AVID tonight and you would like to know more, um, please feel free to, to email me, uh, Mrs. Zold or Ms. Morden. We'd be happy to, to connect and answer any questions that you have. Yeah, so there's a question in the chat. Is the AVID program different from the honors program? It is different. Uh, the AVID is an elective class um, whose content and curriculum are meant to improve um, skills uh, around writing inquiry, collaboration, organization, and reading. Um, so you don't have to be in an honors class to, to be in the AVID elective, but a lot of times, especially for students who are uh, you know, making that jump up into an honors level class, uh, AVID, the AVID elective class can provide a nice level of support. Um, one of the things that, that we didn't see in the AVID slide so far is when we're in the school building full time and, and we have all of our tutors, there's actually two built in days of tutorials. Um, they're a Socratic inquiry based tutorial. It's not a sit down next to an adult who tells you what to do next. Um, it's student led, um, but bottom line is two days a week, students are helping each other um, with their, their class uh, homework. So, um, so it, it's not, Evid is not honors, but it, it can definitely support being in honors. 
especially if you're, you're, you want to give your, your student a shot at honors, but you're not sure, um, AVID would be a, a great support. Uh, I do need to make it clear that it is an elective. So if, you, if you're thinking you want your student to take Spanish in a music class, uh, then you know, we, we have to make a decision because there's only two electives and, and we have lots of great uh, elective options and not just Spanish and band, but Project Lead the Way and, and Art and all the others. Um, more questions in the, the chat. Can you be in both honors and AVID? Yes, you can. Um, the honors ELA and math would be a core class, so those would not take up electives, but the AVID definitely would. Um, uh, let's see, uh, why is AVID pitched only to kids not in honors? Why those? Uh, so we, we don't really pitch AVID to, to any one particular group. We try to do informational presentations to parents and students and we make we, we do our best to try to make everybody aware of, of the AVID program, the AVID elective and the benefits that it offers. Um, I apologize if we've missed you or anyone in your family. Um, we, but again, we are not targeting any one group of kids. We're, we're just trying to, to make everybody aware of, of AVID and its benefits. And if I can add on to what yeah, Tom can just also said, add to that. Um, <laughs> you don't have to start in sixth grade. You, you, can, you can join AVID seventh grade, eighth grade. It's not uncommon for kids um, to, to jump into the AVID elective when they're in high school. So if this is sounding appealing you know, for an older student in your family, or if you're considering it, but you're just not sure for sixth grade, it's not an hour never um, situation at all, just so you know. And then I was just going to speak from experience that I have a few kids that are in the honors class in my sixth grade honors, I mean, in my sixth grade AVID class, and they are thriving and they love it. So it's not like, you know, too easy. I try to like make it a just right fit for everybody. So, you know, if your kid is in honors, it's not going to be super easy. There's going to be the rigor there. And if your kid isn't in honors and aspires to be in honors, that is going to be one of the areas of focus too. So. Um, I hope that helps and informs. So I know we've got a lot more to go. So we're going to turn it back over to, to Ms. Garrett and Mr. Petty. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. And I'll put my email back in the chat. I will also resend out the, I believe we have a recorded AVID presentation. I'll double check. And we definitely, you know, want to... Oh. Acknowledge Dr. Bozzi. I know this was an initiative she put into place and we're going into our third year uh, at the middle school. And the purpose of AVID was to increase the number of students in our honors and advanced placement courses. So I know with this initiative, we have been able to do it, uh, but definitely we give a big shout out and thank you for Dr. Bozzi for bringing you know, this program to the middle school. The, as I said earlier, we will potentially have a semester elective called social justice next year. Um, if you are interested um, in your student participating, you can contact the two teachers you just um, heard talk about, Avid, Ms. Zold or uh, Ms. Morden. Okay. Yeah, we're excited That's about the new program. Next slide. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over my star. Um, like we keep saying, this is something we want everybody to use to check grades, to check missing assignments. Um, so I'm just going to show you two quick slides of what it will look like. Next slide, please. So when you go into my star, you're going to click um, parent can connect or student connect like it shows on the this is on our website next slide please and then this this shows you um the student's name and then you want to make sure that you click the show all where the arrow is pointing under the number three um i'm sorry let me go back first you want to go to um assignments when you pull up your student you'll go to assignments and then you'll see 
the obvious assignments on the left, you see the points possible, the grade, um, and you know the teacher can check off if it's extra credit. If it's done late, there's comments. Um, but you want to make sure that you show all so you can see what's missing also. And we know for the my star, uh, Mrs. Jeffries is working with our incoming fifth graders on how to access getting their usernames and passwords. And it's very important. And I know this is uh, something Mrs. Garrett will review is that students regularly check their assignments that they at least once a week check their grades. But I do know coming into middle school, you know, remembering those passwords and usernames sometimes can be challenging, but we're appreciative of the work that Mrs. Jeffrey is doing in advance with giving students some practice. So once again, when they come in, they'll know how, and then they also should be able to model that for you as parents. Thank you. Next slide, please, Ms. Jeffrey. There are actually two questions in the chat before you guys move on. The first one was, can you change electives during the school year? We, we, we're gonna probably go through it after we get to the end. So can we get through okay. the, yep. then we'll do questions at the end. Academic support options. Um, teachers have weekly office hours, um, extended learning day fall 2021. The nest will be open uh, for student projects. Um, emotional support, that would be me or Mrs. Gregory Webb. Um, Ms. Ms. Harvey is our reading intervention. Mr. Sigler is our math. I'm sorry. Keep going. Um, and then the last one just talks about making sure that my star is your best friend, memorizing and learning your students' um, ID number and their password um, is really important. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this sixth grade or Mr. We want to talk about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk. Mrs. Morton and uh, the sixth grade team have worked really hard on developing the sixth grade summer orientation. Uh, I know she was a brain. This was her brainchild, and it's been a very, very important transition transition program for students. Uh, we haven't set that date, but I know over the last two years and going into the third year that the kids who have gone through this program uh, have done an, an amazing job adapting to the middle school. So we give a big shout out to Ms. Michelle Morton and the IO team as a whole. So uh, parents be on the lookout for those dates uh, in early August uh, when we will have that sixth grade summer orientation. I've also been in uh, discussions with Mrs. Jeffries uh, in, uh, about potentially having a uh, sixth grade or early entering sixth graders uh, camp in mid-May as an opportunity for students to, you know, get acclimated. And once again, we're basing a lot of this on uh, our upcoming health conditions, but I do believe we have an, a date that Mrs. Jeffries will be sharing with parents soon. So we want to get our, our sixth graders on site. We want to get them acclimated to the building uh, and we want them to continue to interact with our phenomenal staff. So we're excited about both the sixth grade orientation as well as a potential event in mid-May. Next slide, please. Thank you, Mr. Petty, and welcome once again, students and caregivers. This slide is going to discuss the athletic offerings we offer at Ferndale Middle School. Cross country, football, basketball, swim team, volleyball, wrestling, baseball, softball, and track and field. Please also notice that we've attempted to put the season. We have three distinct seasons at the middle school level in the right-hand column. So cross country football and basketball are fall sports, swimming, volleyball, and wrestling are winter sports, and baseball, softball, and track and field will be held during the spring season. Additionally, please notice Mr. Warkacheski, our athletic coordinator, his contact information is listed at the bottom of the slide. Next um, one, Mr. Francis, there was one question the students had a lot. Are some of the sports just seventh and eighth, and then some are sixth, seventh, eighth? Is that correct? Correct. The contact, the, the contact sports, when there are big differences between si the, the size differential, are the ones that are, are limited by grade level. 
This slide discusses the student clubs that we offer at Ferndale Middle School. Mr. Blatt had mentioned a couple earlier, the books, the book club and Dungeons and Dragons are under his jurisdiction. We also have robotics team, student council, anime, geography club, chess club, art club, and jazz choir. Next slide, please. Thank you, Mrs. Jeffrey. National Junior Honor Society. Mrs. Quorum, who is our project lead the way coordinator and also a science teacher is our Ferndale Middle School National Junior Honor Society coordinator. NJH students are recognized for their leadership skills and abilities, participation in community service events, their character and their academic pursuits. Students must have and maintain a GPA of 3.3 or higher. And again, there is a chance for them to, comp to com uh, complete community service projects or in, in an awesome end of, this, end of the year school trip. Yes, to, to interject, uh, Mrs. Quorum has done such an amazing job. Our numbers with our National Junior Honor Society has, when, when I looked at the data last, had increased by 20%. And we're looking for an increase in those numbers even higher. But once again, she has continued to do a great job. And we're seeing both accessibility and, and uh, once again, increased numbers. So great job with our National Junior Honor Society. And we have two eighth grade leaders who will be leaving us, Mrs. Nadja Williams and Ruth Bryson, who currently serve as president and vice president. Thank you, Mr. Petty. And at this time, we'll turn it back over to you. Yikes. I didn't mean it, but forgive me. Mr. Francis is a phenomenal assistant principal. We're so fortunate to have him with his committed dedication and uh, even our, our, our entire staff. So when you look at this evening's presentation, Ferndale Middle School is a team and there is no, there's no I in team. So when you look at this past year with the, with the bumps and the bruises and virtual learning, uh, our art department under Mrs. Lori Tuziant were, were still able to maintain a FMS tradition, which was the school uh, door decorating competition. Our kids were, uh, our scholars were amazing uh, with this process, uh, but it goes along with the leadership that she took along with all of our impact, our teachers. Next slide, please. Uh, Mr. Francis led uh, and, and had an idea about redecorating the front entrance. And once again, having a talented and, and, and a teacher who is a leader like Ms. Tuziat, they took on that challenge and not only talked about it, they did it and did an entire redecorating of our front entryway, both Ms. Tuziat and the art club. So we want our kids to be a part of making our school better. And this wonderful building beautification project uh, exemplify both the hard work and commitment of our staff, but also the hard work and commitment of our scholars. Next slide, please. Uh, she also had this year, and as was mentioned, we did our best. And once again, the goal and hope is that we'll be back on a traditional uh, learning cycle for next year. But maintaining the virtual art show was, tr was tremendously important for both students and staff, and even as a building administrator, to see how creative our students are, even during these, you know, unprecedented times. But to see their creativity and to see the hard work of Ms. Tuziat was inspiring for all, and it really showcased how creative students and how resilient students are. And great job, and we look forward to continuing to maintain these type of projects moving forward. Uh, next slide, please. We were able this year to uh, be able to hire a mental health uh, support specialist, Mrs. Gregory Webb, and her and Mrs. Guerra, we felt that it's important, even when we look at this presentation and we know we're outlining, you know, a lot around scheduling and a lot around honors programming and a lot around added, but we also understand the reality of our current situation. So we wanted to try to provide some tips uh, from a mental health support plan for parents and students moving forward through the summer. Mrs. Guerra and Mrs. Gregory Webb. Hi everyone, as I mentioned earlier, I am the new mental health specialist, uh, Kristen Gregory Webb, and I'm very excited uh, to meet all of your students. So um, 
as uh, Mr. Petty mentioned, we have had quite a um, complicated, unique year uh, with COVID. So we wanted to compile some advice or some suggestions rather for mental health tips for your, um, for your children. So one of the most important things is practicing self-care and making a conscious effort to promote your own physical, mental, and emotional health. And self-care can look like anything from taking a bike ride, listening to music, meditating, even journaling. I always tell uh, students, you know, even if you just want to journal and get your thoughts out, it's a wonderful outlet. Going for a walk, uh, participating in sports, these are all things that are wonderful outlets. Um, uh oh, our slide switched here. Yep, can you go? Yep. Thank you. Yeah, go. Okay, yep, there we go. Okay, well, actually, the one before that, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So, another um, example of self care and, or um, suggestions are communicate with others and don't isolate. I know it's been so hard with the back and forth between virtual and in person learning, but it's important to continue to maintain a social network of friends, family, whether you're FaceTiming, texting. Uh, I know everybody's familiar with Zoom now. So just maintaining some sort of social um, socialization during this time is also very helpful. Getting organized, preparing for the fall. Um, these are things that uh, promote confidence. If you feel organized and you're feeling good, um, that's also very helpful. Um, so also, there's also resources. Of course, you'll have uh, myself in the school. Um, even during this time with virtual with, with virtual learning, um, I can be reached uh, virtually. I've done Zooms with students during this time. Um, the students that are in person, hopefully we'll see them next week. But then also um, phones. So we make sure that we accommodate for whatever the situation is with COVID since it's ever changing. But in the event that um, you need additional resources, I just listed some on here, Common Ground, Catholic Social Services, Oakland Family Services, these are outside resources that can also provide support. We can go to the next slide, please. Okay, in the mental health fall 2021 transition. Um, so Ms. Guerra and I thought that it was very important that uh, students continue to practice self-care throughout the year. Um, and also, like I said, the school staff, we are here to support the whole child and we wanna make sure that this is a great transition for your students. So please utilize us. Um, myself, Ms. Guerra, uh, Ann Kelly, who is a school social worker, we are here for your child. So we wanna make sure that you're utilizing us and also for parents. If you have questions or concerns with your students or you're noticing any changes, please reach out to us. We wanna be there to provide support. Um, talk to your teachers daily. Students should uh, always reach out to their teachers if they have concerns, if they feel as though they're falling behind. Teachers are your best resource for anything school related and or not school related. If you just need someone to talk to, you might mention something to a teacher and that's fine. Um, the staff at FMS cares about the whole student, as I mentioned, so we just want to provide as much support as possible. We are here to help with anything and provide support for families and students. Thank you all, and I look forward to seeing your students in the fall. And as, as Mrs. Uh, Gregory Webb mentioned, we understand the realities of our current situation. And it's been stressful on students, it's been stressful on staff, it's been stressful on parents. So we wanna take advantage of these resources. Uh, we also have a, a, a Ferndale Youth Assistance on site as a support partner as well. But please, if you have a child who is experiencing any forms of uh, you know, emotional or social uh, support deficits or need, please reach out to Mrs. Gre uh, Garrett, Mrs. Gregory Webb, or Mrs. Ann Kelly, and also take advantage of the strategies that were mentioned. I know they sound old fashioned, but when you have kids who are on computers or on technology for 13 or 14 hours a day, they need to unplug. They need to go, as my grandmother used to say, go outside and play. Next slide, please. So what's next? Um, a Google form will be sent out to families with classes and electives. Um, there's a video. I'm not sure if we really don't probably have time to watch it right now, but um, you can click on this video. It's just me explaining how to fill out the form. If you have any questions at all, my email is there. Um, you can reach me at school. I'm happy to help with anything I can. 
um, sixth grade orientation will be in early August. Uh, we will be, students will get their ID photos taken, um, pick up schedules, changes will, you know, will most likely be able to be done, but it's impacted by availability. Um, students will come on site, get their locker information, practice combinations, uh, take an additional building tour. Those are all things that we know create anxiety in kids. So we want to make sure that they feel comfortable um, in our building. And I think Next slide. Um, that's maybe one more slide. Yeah. Um, just we can we can do great things, but it's going to take a lot of work and commitment. Yeah, a lot. And, and, and we know that our kids have the resiliency and we have a phenomenal parent body that we know are going to provide the necessary supports. Uh, and we're just excited about moving forward. Uh, now we're going to take those questions. What times does the meeting end? <laughs> it was supposed to have ended at seven o'clock, but I went over my time. I apologize. Next question. <laughs> All right, we got, is it 12 in there, Katie? All right. Uh, one question earlier was, what is the technology elective? Uh, that class is gonna involve digital media, uh, coding, uh, and uh, some form of research. We, we're in the process of hiring. We had Mrs. Claper who was in that role. Uh, we're looking at how we can have a hybrid and even potentially have another teacher who's on site currently do a class around Google Suites and how to uh, utilize uh, technology effectively and professionally. So we're, 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 that, that's four pieces that I'm talking about, Google Suites, coding, digital media, research uh, will probably be the primary focal points for our technology class for next year. The other question earlier was, can students change electives mid-year? Uh, and, and I know, Mrs. Gary, when you look at certain elective options, our goal is to be supportive of students if they want to change, but also supporting students and not giving up on certain classes or certain electives. Uh, we know being out of school for a while, you know, students probably will want to stop and start but we also want to support students in, you know, sticking to it. And I definitely look at our unified arts program as a place where we want kids to stick it out and stick through because it takes hard work. But as I said, we know we are committed and able to do it. But if a student feels as though it is too challenging or overwhelming, we definitely will look at ways to support. Okay, Mr. Mays has put in request for AVID, AVID application. The, the link is in the chat again. Um, and I think that is the remainder of the questions, Mr. Petty. Um, timeline, the Google form, this presentation, and Ms. Guerra's video will be sent out, uh, let's say tomorrow morning. I'm not gonna do it tonight, sorry. So um, it will be sent out tomorrow morning to you. Um, and it is a, a kind of a quick turnaround. The kids have had this information for a week already, so they have had the opportunity to think through what they might want. Um, and so we, we would like that Google form filled out um, by next Wednesday, I believe we said, Mr. Petty, April 28th. So we have a week um, and that gives you time to reach out and ask questions. Um, but it is vitally important that you complete this scheduling form with your, with your student. Um, I do not want to be tracking you down. This is their scheduling for next year. This is how it's happening. Um, and so it needs to be completed. So I will send out reminders, but um, this is a responsibility of the family and the student to complete this form. Uh, Miss Amy, do you have a question? Nikki, I think you have your hand up. Oh yeah, or Kim Schroeder. Kim, your hand is up. No question. Well, I, I just want to- Oh, there's a few more, Mr. Petty, too. Okay. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you want the questions first or? Yes, please, Ms. Jeffrey. Okay, how many honors classes can a student elect to take? Uh, the self-selection process allows for them and we're offering two. Uh, so they would definitely be able to 
self-selected into the ELA and math honors classes. Is the social justice elective currently on the form? I don't think so. I think uh, we are we are sending those uh, email requests to Mrs. Morton and Mrs. Zoe, uh, but we are offering the social justice course for incoming sixth grade students who uh, select that course. It is not on the form though. Right. So if you're interested, if you are interested in in your student taking that, we just need an email to one of the teachers. I will put that in the email to families as well with their email addresses. Any additional questions? Thank you, Ms. Jeffrey. Mr. Petty, can I say of just course. one thing about cross country very quickly? Mm -hmm. um, so I did mention uh, everybody, I am the cross country coach and to jump on uh, Ms. Gregory Webb's uh, presentation with self-care and team building. If you, uh, if your uh, child wants to participate in the fall, I'd be happy to have them uh, run for us. Uh, cross country is a great way to transition in sixth grade. It's been a um, very positive experience for all my runners as they transition into sixth grade. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the season. I hope I'm hopeful that we're going to have one. But if you, uh, I'm going to um, graciously ask Miss uh, Miss Jeffrey once again to send out my information uh, before the year's out, uh, maybe for a a meeting this year for next year. And um, but if you're interested, I will take any and all runners for the fall season. Thank you. And I will come to practice and try to run a quarter of a mile with you all during Mr. Sigler's track practice. I got up to an eighth of a mile last year. I'll just chime in and I wanna thank this amazing staff of teachers and counselors and administrators. Uh, they are so committed to excellence and to serving you and our students. And I say that honestly and with all sincerity, and I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. I'm gonna ask as we you know, get ready to close out, Ms. Jeffrey, as we, if you have any additional questions, as she said, please follow up with us. And we also take your feedback on the presentation. So anything we could do better moving forward, it's always our goal as a team to look at how we can make sure that we're providing the necessary information and supports for our families and partners. We want to thank Ms. Guerra for her hard work and commitment. I uh, also want to give another shout out to Mrs. Morton and Mrs. Zoe's social justice class which is so timely in our current situation. And I know she has built a phenomenal curriculum moving forward, but we thank you parents for coming this evening. And I look forward to Mrs. Jeffrey and I scheduling an upcoming event and Mrs. Morton and the sixth grade team scheduling that sixth grade orientation in August. Thank you for coming out on behalf of Ferndale Middle School and have a great evening, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ms. Jeffries. You're right.